Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my latest weekly-ish reading vlog. So, in my last one, I turned 30, and we did some stuff for that. And in this one, well, I'm going to go and see The Mouse Trap by Agatha Christie in London on Saturday. So that should be good, and get some nice vegan food. And then on the Sunday, uh, probably going to be going to Oxford to do a pub, uh, to do a pub quiz. We've got on Friday, actually, as well, I'm hosting an open mic. And I'm currently reading Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King, and I'm about halfway through. Yeah, all right, let's uh, crack on with the vlog. I'm um, watching Alex Black. My God, I am tired. I don't, maybe it's just because I've turned 30. I don't know, I even look tired. Also, I don't know what's going on with my hair. I've had my hat on all day. Um, I had a driving lesson earlier, that's going okay. I have my test on like July 5th, and yeah, apparently we're good to go ahead with the test, so hopefully that goes well, I guess. Um, I'm still reading Nightmares and Dreamscapes, I'm on page 552, so I've made like a pretty decent dent now. A couple more days I reckon. Uh, we're going into London on Saturday to see uh, The Mouse Trap, so hopefully I will either finish it or have finished it by then. And that's pretty much all I've got for you, I've been cracking on my bedtime books as well. Today I'm doing some filming, so after this I am filming, finishing off my uh, wrap up of the Penguin Little Black Classic, so I've just got these left to talk about. I'm going to pre-film part of my wrap-up as well, and then I've got a tag to do as well. What is it? The the book? No. Is it the books? No, it's... Oh, I'm doing the mid-year check-in tag, which I created with Harriet Rosie ages ago, and we'd forgotten about, and then Book Invasion did it and tagged us both again, so... So, I've got to go and do that. All right. Editing too, maybe. Although, I've done lots of editing already, so... Yeah. Oh, and I've got to call a client in a minute. Hey, Biggs. You all right? Hey Bex, what are you reading? I'm reading um, your birthday present. Oh, my birthday present, yeah. Uh, King. Oh, lovely. It's How... really good. Excellent. I've only like... You're on page six. Eleven. Oh, okay. Good, doing good. So I think it's about to take a very dark turn. Cool. Then I'll leave you to it because I don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I've been making this, this cauliflower Alfredo. And it is now ready to serve, so we're going to eat this and then go to the art centre open mic. Yeah, the final result. There we go. Very nice. Because 
the tambour that is playing in the background is a lovely kind of soundscape ish um, meditation kind of thing. So you can just relax. Don't worry. Wishy washy nonsense or some old cliche. Something's not right. Well, we're at Marlebone. Oh, that. <laughs> Big ass bubbles. CHQ field office. With computers and stuff in. That looks recognizable as an office. <laughs> this is like the gift shop people. Well, what is this? This isn't the gift shop. There are just gifts available. I'd like to explore Okay. I think there's probably one over there. We can go do space. Yeah, let's go there then. We've got heavy duty machinery. We could go to the IMAX as well. Don't really have time. Don't have time, do we really? The what? A big world. Why is there a pirate? I don't understand. Oh, I see. The rockets used by the British Army. Sir Isaac Newton. things yeah a v2 engine the world's first long-range missile that's cool there's a there's a holographic earth Big old moon lander thingy. Oh yeah. We've got a bit of moon. It is the moon. Oh, it's sparkly. This sounds cool.
You've been learning about stuff. The Age of Enlightenment, yeah. Very cool, more machinery. I, I like machinery. So this is a mirror from a telescope. The big old boy. I like this. You seen that giant mirror over there from a telescope? Choo choo! It's Thomas. Aeroplanes. That's pretty badass. And a wall of minis. Did I ever tell you my granddad used to build speedboats? Did he? He, he built the speedboats that were used in one of the James Bond movies. <laughs> yeah. Hey look, it's the double helix. And a big stack of cars. It's got Morris Miners in it. Hey, is that top one moving? <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a space hatchy thing. Command module simulator. Those are tiny cars. A brain scanner. It's a cathedral clock. Oh, we're going into the atmosphere. We can learn about the atmosphere. Out of time. Because it's not like we're dawdling. Ooh. Here's one of the gift shops. Very cool. I hope, uh, I hope driverless cars don't look like that. Yeah. It looks like you, it's like a portable church, isn't it? A stained glass like window. Bed, it? Yeah, it does look like a bed. Stained glass driverless sleeper car of the future. No. Hey, it's Boaty. Well done, internet. It's a two-third scale model, so actually they're not much bigger than that then. It's cool. Some drony McDrone faces over there. Self could self-driving robots grow your food? Again, I don't see any reason why not. Vertical farming as well, you heard of vertical farming? Vertical farming's badass. Bex is leading us the wrong way. Just thought I'd document it so that I could be like, ha, ah, I told you so. No, this might be the right way, I don't know. What does that say? Who am I? Christ, it's gonna give me an identity crisis. Oh, I'm terrible at these. You got, yeah, press the button. Okay. You may unpeer now. That wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> you know how much you love heights, my love. We've got higher up to go yet. Bex is going to play the, tr the trust game. Well, Winston gave us our money back before. Oh! Oh! No, that's excuses, Winston. You can pay by bank transfer, mate. Winston has given you nothing. So actually, we're down 50 quid now, Winston. We're going right up to the top. Because Bex is scared of heights. <laughs> Not in the movie. Okay, that's good. So you'll be alright because I've arranged for us to abseil down the side of the building. No. Yeah. <laughs> Prosthetic arm with a bionic hand. The people, they look so tiny. Yeah. 
Okay, that's cool. What are you doing? I am trying to see the different... Yeah, this one echoes more. Cool. cool. That one's lined with a special material to absorb the noise. Oh, like a silencer? Yeah. Or a dampener? Exactly. Well, there we go. The basement studio, it appears to be locked, but I wonder if to see it anyway. Oh, that's cool. Little play area -y bit. Now that is impressive. Look at that. Made that gobstopper. Really? Yeah. Little coffee place. A terrace. A commode. A two hole ladder. So we can both do our business at the same time. Yeah. Open the door, love. I can't. There's another lock. One key opens both locks. Don't need it here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Though. Sensors and stuff. Alright, should we reset score? Alright, here we go. Oh, I wasn't watching. Hang on, start again. Alright, here we go. I'm on the right. Oh! One point to me. <laughs> that was satisfying. That was almost as satisfying as winning 10-7 or whatever it was. Yeah, 10-7. So I did bring it back a little. You brought it back a little. Pretty cool old gear. Making that speaker wobble. Cool. So we don't have that one. That's Columbia. I can't see what it is. Can't see what's on that one. What's this one? Nothing. It's a long way to my home in Kentucky. What? A historic place where the Queen made her first tweet. <laughs> what do you reckon she tweeted? Something like, in the science museum, hashtag lol. I mean... It's a big ass thing. It's uh, an aer... no. An aerial tuning inductor? Is it? I don't know, that's what that says. Bolshe Electronia Shednyanya Mishana. It's a Soviet computer. Computer stuff. More computer stuff. Bex is warm from climbing stairs. That's cool. Uh oh, I've lost her. There she is, she's over there. Let's look at this telephone box. Look, it's one of the Google things. <laughs> Alright, hang on. <laughs> Hello. Death Star. Oh no, it's the Telstar satellite. 
Yeah, it even inspired a pop song. I know Telstar by the Tornadoes. It's an instrumental. It goes... Yeah. Faith and quiet contemplation room. It sounds like the kind of place you need. It's where I'll leave you to go for a sit while I explore. <laughs> In the quiet contemplation room. So we're on the mezzanine. Come along there, along, along the mezzanine with me. Along the mezzanine. A turn. A, we'll, go for a, we'll go for a jaunt. A singular, singular little skedaddle along the mezzanine. Data centers. Oh, an old computer. Another reminder I need to read War and Peace, though. I don't know where you go. I Yeah. Oh, it's cool. It's Isaac Newton's book. By the inventor Sir Isaac Newton. Probably not in focus. And then all this equipment and shit. It is the moon. Not the moon. I don't know what this is. No. There was a thing that said something about the moon. Oh, Lord. Ah. This will be funny. No, I've got a video of you going under. Even better. The aeroplane. Where does the door go? The, that door? Narnia? I don't know. This is kind of cool over here. Oh! Some schools. You found Guinevere. Mm. Mm. Draw. It's a difference engine designed by Charles Babbage. A shake bar, Wonder Lab. Oh, so that's where you can go and sit with those like Quentin Blake style things. <laughs> yeah, that's ironic. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I've been on some of these things before. Yeah, it's like a VR. A dynamic simulator. It's kind of appropriate to have all the eight these aeroplanes right at the top of the top floor, isn't it? Especially it looks like an airport hangar. Yeah. I don't know. You would have thought we wouldn't have been able to miss that.
Where's everyone? What are we missing here? Huh? We are at Unity Diner. Let's have a little try of your cherry aid. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's very so. That's very cherry. Mm. Independent beers for independent people. Mm. Yeah. I like that painting, and I bet Bex hates it. Yeah. She's got no taste in weird art. Yeah. Never had a pink burger. You haven't lived, my love. We got some fries on the way. Here we go. Oh. Alright. It was good. Mm. In my belly. I want to get a little. That is a lot of performances, isn't it? To the bar, Batman. I was going to record this donut before we ate it, but somebody ate her half already. What's it taste like? Any good? It's amazing, isn't it? It does taste like a donut. Hi, I'm watching Rob Scallon talk about a pipe organ, which is rather cool. Okay, so it is uh, Sunday, um, so yesterday, I'll, I'll update you on yesterday in a second, but basically the plan for today is, uh, Beck stayed over yesterday, she's headed back to Oxford, I'm going to head over to Oxford in a couple of hours, in fact I need to get the train in a couple of hours, so I need to get ready and stuff soon, but um, yeah, I'm going to go and meet her and some of her friends, I'm going to go to a pub quiz, and uh, yeah. So yesterday was like my belated birthday adventure, so we went into London, we went to the Science Museum, which is fun, always like, like going around there. Excuse me, then we went to Unity Diner, which is owned by Earthling Ed, which is this vegan restaurant where basically it's, it's a non-profit, so any profits from it go towards this like animal sanctuary and the charity. Uh, the food was pretty good, it was kind, it was pretty expensive for what you got I thought, but um, you know, obviously it's a treat. And um, yeah, it did taste good. Uh, I think. I was saying to Bex, there's a place in Oxford called uh, the Happy Friday Kitchen, which I think has the best vegan menu. Um, and then I think the best prices are the one in Camden. Um, uh, uh, what? Temple of Satan, that's what it's called. Um, but I did, I'm glad I went to Unity as well, and it's obviously it's nice to support the animals there. Uh, then we went to see the mouse trap. Um, I don't know, I, it was good, but it wasn't great, I thought, and like this was nothing to do with the production or anything, I thought like the actors and the actual production of it were, were really good, but um, I don't know, I think maybe I've read too much Agatha Christie, so it was kind of obvious what was going to happen, if that makes sense. Um, and also, I just, I didn't particularly like the first act of the play, because it was played up too much like a comedy, and then like once... It, Basically, once stuff starts to happen in the second act, that's when it was like, okay, now I'm kind of invested. So I think they could have combined the first and the second acts, and then there could have been 
you know, an additional act where somebody else dies. Obviously, this is a criticism of Agatha Christie, not of the, the production of the, <laughs> the Mousetrap. But yeah, if it was a novel, I think I would have given it like 3.25 or 3.5 out of 5, and I was kind of expecting it to be a, be a 5. But I mean, I'm glad I went, and I think it's something, if you're an Agatha Christie fan, you should go to. And uh, yeah, it was certainly, you know, a good old evening. So the other things to mention is that I've finished reading Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King at last. I'm going to do a fuller review of this for the uh, My Cat Picks My TBR video anyway. But um, yeah, it was alright. It, it got to the end. I kind of flag near the end, especially because we have these couple of cases, a uh, couple of stories near the end where, well, one of them is actually... One of them is basically a Sherlock Holmes story, but written in the style of Raymond Chandler, but by Stephen King, which was, you know, it was interesting, but it didn't really fit with the rest of the collection, I didn't think. And then there was an essay about Little League Baseball, which, oh my God, I, d I, don't, I don't care for sports in general. So that was kind of long, but then we get to the notes at the end, and I always find the notes really interesting. So overall, this is probably like a 3.75, maybe a four out of five. I think I'm gonna give it a four out of five, why not? And the other thing I read was The Vampire's Revenge by Willis Hall. So I used to read these books as a kid. These are about a vegetarian vampire called Alucard. And in this, kind of, he goes to America and someone tries to get him to star in a film, but then they try and screw him over and whatnot. And yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. I gave this a four out of five as well. I was surprised by it because I thought I was just reading it just, you know, for the lols and for the... Um, you know, for the nostalgia, and actually it was quite a good story and quite well written and quite well told, so yeah, I, I enjoyed that. And now I am reading We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, uh, and I'm not particularly enjoying it so far, and I'm about a quarter of the way through. I'll probably finish it today, especially uh, on the train to Oxford. But yeah, this is on course, like it's like 3.25, maybe a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought, I thought it wasn't gonna, well, it does say on the back, a tale of love and romance, a tale of tragedy. And yeah, it is, it's a romance novel so far, and I was expecting it to be more of like a a thriller, almost, in the vein of uh, Gillian Flynn and all those lot. So, so I don't know, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. All right. And who's the country singer? Oh yeah, the one who does the dirty songs. Yeah. It's Nick, Nick Atkinson, his name is. Who can sing any dirty songs? It's Vietnamese sticky tofu, lovely. Yo, I'm currently watching Cody do her uh, weekly reading vlog. Definitely recommend them. This time she's in uh, Sardinia, I think she said, with her boyfriend, Massey. Um, actually, I left her a comment because um, I think she lives in Edinburgh. If any of you live in Edinburgh, let me know because uh, Bex and I are going to go for uh, the, uh, the Fringe Festival. So I I'm not sure of the dates just yet because we haven't, we haven't decided those, but... Um, yeah, that, anyone wants to show us around like charity bookshops, that kind of stuff, sounds good to me. So yesterday uh, I went to Oxford for this pub quiz. We came in third, so we did all right. We probably would have won if people had listened to me, but people didn't listen to me. Like, like one of them was like, you had to name the people that these baby photos are of, and I was pretty sure one of them is Hitler. And everyone thought I was just joking, and it was Hitler. So, <laughs> But never mind. We we won a bottle of wine, which was good because it was someone's birthday as well. So that was like a nice little little birthday gift to them. And now I'm back home. I'm just going to update you on what I've been reading. So did I did I mention I finished Nightmares and Dreamscapes? I don't know if I did, but anyway, I finished Nightmares and Dreamscapes when we headed into uh, London for the Mouse Trap. And yeah, it was pretty good. I'd probably give it like a four out of five. Um, the ending of it, like the last couple of stories in it probably could have been removed. I mean, one of them was an essay about baseball, which I'm not particularly interested in. And there was also like a uh, his version of a Sherlock Holmes story, which I wasn't super sold on. But um, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one. Then we have a couple of bedtime... Oh no, we have some others over here. All right, then I read We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, which I got because it's like a booktube darling. And I was expecting this to be like a thriller, like a YA thriller, almost in the vein of like Gone Girl and Girl on the Train. And it's basically a romance novel, at least for the first half. And then we get this big twist at the end, which I just didn't like. So that made me drop it for, it was a three out of five, and then it dropped down to a two out of five. I also didn't like this thing that she does, where she like stretches sentences over multiple paragraphs. 
So much in love that equally desperate measures must be taken and over like four lines. And also another thing in this is that these like fairy tale bits that the, like the main character is kind of writing, um, you know, to make sense of what's happening in her life, I guess. There are also like lots of different sections. Uh, so, for example, here, like, like part one, welcome, and then. So there's a lot of like blank space in this and just the blank space combined with that weird layout thing she kept doing and with these like fairy tale bits made me think that she was kind of trying to stretch it out to make it longer. I think she's a she, I don't know, I didn't bother looking it up to be honest, I very rarely do. Oh and her other books sound awful. The Boyfriend List, The Boy Book, The Treasure Map of Boys and Real Live Boyfriends. So I guess, yeah, it, no, it just wasn't for me but... You know, I appreciate some people do like it as well. And I can see, like, there are reasons to like it. It's just, uh, I guess what, like, ticks my boxes, if that makes sense. Like, you know, as a reader, you know, certain things tick my boxes and certain things don't. I, what I did like was this kind of element of almost a locked room mystery on the island. But, um, yeah. Uh, then we have another bedtime book, which is Last Human by Doug Naylor. So this is a novel based on the Red Dwarf TV show, which I used to love. And actually it kind of backfired for me because of that, because basically what they do in these books is they take like scenes and like in interchanges between the characters from the episodes and then put them into the novel along with a bunch of other stuff. So suddenly all this stuff that's like canon on the TV show is now canon but happening in a different situation, if that makes sense. And it just really infuriates me. Uh, and there was even a bit where like the the wrong characters like de like dishing out the punchlines and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I did kind of get into it still. It kind of redeemed itself towards the end. I'd probably give it like a 3.25 out of five. Bleh. I'll probably give it a 3.25 out of five. And for me, it's the worst of the Red Dwarf novels. And it's possibly no coincidence. This is written by Doug Naylor as opposed to Grant Naylor which is Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. And so, uh, yeah, I just think they work better together than, than they do separately, I guess. And then we have If You Liked School, You'll Love Work by Irvin Welsh. So this is a collection of short stories. Uh, we have a few different ones in here. So we have uh, Rattlesnakes, which is basically about someone gets bitten on the penis by a rattlesnake and then his friend has to, like, suck the venom out. And then these, like, Mexican gangsters kind of go into their tent while this is happening and then hold them at gunpoint and it's all very odd. Uh, then we have If You Like School You'll Love Work, The Dogs of Lincoln Park, Miss Arizona, I don't remember those ones as much. And then we have Kingdom of Fife which basically does the second half of the book and is really an, almost a novel in its own right and I think it should have been published as a novel in its own right. But that's basically about this guy, he's like a, an ex-jockey living in Fife in Scotland and uh, yeah, follows like the comings and going ons are goings on there. There's there was a bit a, a point at which where a character gets killed. He's on his motorbike and the, the speed kill sign has been bent out of the way and it hits him in the head and takes his head off basically. Yeah, overall I probably give this a four out of five, but I am also glad that I read it like a little bit at a time in the evenings because because otherwise it it would have been quite slow going I think. And now. I am reading Lock and Key of Volume 1, Welcome to Lovecraft by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. So I got the box set of this with my birthday money. My mum gave me an Amazon voucher as well. And um, my other half's really into graphic novels, but she's also really into, or she's been getting into Joe Hill through me, basically, I guess. Well, we were out charity shopping and I picked up Horns and then she read it first and then I read it afterwards. And then, um, then, we, then she read Heart Shaped Box as well. So now she's working away through these and she's working away ahead of them. So she's on volume three at the moment, but uh, I'm catching up. So yeah, and I think that's about it for this week's reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of these books. If you've read any of them, hit the subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.